All right, hello class. Uh, welcome to the pre-lab lecture for the LDH lab. This is going to be a five-week lab, and we'll do a little pre-lab uh, today, just looking at what we're going to do during week one. So just as a brief overview of the five weeks of this lab in the week one, which we're doing this week, we're going to start purifying our LDH from our potato. Um, once we do that, we're going to finish purifying it, and then we're going to analyze it to see basically how pure it is and how much we got. So um, to go into a little bit more detail in our week one, we're going to go through these four steps. We're going to start by homogenizing our sample to break everything up and then start salting out different types of proteins to try to isolate the protein that we want. Then we're going to, we're going to do a few steps with centrifugation to separate out some, um, some things in the pellet from some things in the supernatant that we want to, you know, save one or the other. And then we're going to finish up with doing some dialysis to, to further continue pur purifying our protein. In our second week, we're going to finish purifying um, by doing some affinity chromatography and then doing a spin column. And then finally, we're going to characterize the LDH that we have finished purifying with, um, with uh, a few different assays. So in our activity assay, we're going to look at um, the, uh, the LDH's ability to catalyze a reaction. So it'll tell us basically how pure it is. And then we're going to look at a Bradford assay, which will tell us the total amount of protein we have. So that will fit tell. So by figuring out how much LDH we have using our activity assay and our Bradford assay uh, to figure out our total protein present, we can then use that to figure out the purity of what we were isolated. And then we'll also look at a gel electrophoresis, um, looking at the same idea to see how much we got and how pure it is. So the first step of what we're doing in week one is going to be homogenization. So this is just freeing all the components from our cell. You're going to start with um, some chunks of potato, and we're going to just you know, grind them up in a blender uh, with some buffer. So please make sure, just some basic considerations with the blender, please make sure you cover the blender before you start it, otherwise you'll make a big mess. Um, and please try to make your solution as homogenous as possible. Um, if you see any big chunks, please keep on blending until you have a pretty uniform uh, suspension of potato in buffer. Um, so once we've done that, we're going to do our first centrifugation step. So centrifugation is a lab procedure where we um, we spin our samples very quickly um, to separate them essentially by density. So denser solids will settle at the bottom of your tube, and um, soluble um, soluble components will remain suspended in the liquid that stays at the top of the tube. Um, so this is a picture of a rotor that you might see in a centrifuge, and it has spots for this one has spots for eight different samples. Um, and so, um, yeah, and then what you'll see at the end of the centrifugation is the pellet at the bottom of your tube. This contains the solids. So in this case, from our potato, it'll have maybe components of the cell membrane and other um, maybe more dense parts. And then our supernatant, which is the liquid portion, um, that is going to contain all of your soluble components, like maybe sugars, as well as soluble proteins. And in our case, the LDH we're looking for is a soluble protein, so you're going to find it in your supernatant. Something really, really important to consider when you're centrifug centrifuging is two things. Um, first, please label your tubes. Every person is going to have their own sample. We need to be able to tell them apart because we're going to load multiple samples together in that centrifuge to spin together. Um, and it's um, and it's also very, very important to balance your tubes within 0 0.1 grams of one another. The centrifuge rotor spins extremely fast, and if it is unbalanced at all, it can be very, very dangerous. You can break the centrifuge, you can hurt yourself, you can hurt surrounding things in the room. Um, so please, um, when you're preparing your samples for centrifuging, um, find a, a, a partner or a, or a balance partner, a balance friend um, and weigh out your tubes. Whoever has the, the lighter tube, please add water or buffer so that the two tubes are within 0.1 grams of each other and then label them so we know that those tubes are correctly balanced with each other. Um, once you are completed your, the centrifugation, you have your supernatant and your pellet. And like I mentioned, we're saving the supernatant. So once you do to, to save that, we're going to pour out the supernatant. This procedure is called decanting, and we'll, and we'll decant it through a cheesecloth. And this is just to separate out any large chunks that, for whatever reason, might still be remaining in the supernatant. You can pour it into a beaker, or you could even pour it directly into a graduated cylinder, because the next thing you have to do is measure and record the volume of your supernatant. 
once you've done that, please set aside one mil of your supernatant and keep it in a glass vial. We're gonna um, we're gonna analyze this later along with some of our other samples um, to see essentially how pure our sample was when we started within just our whole you know potato lysate and um, and then compare it to the later on steps um, where we hopefully will have more pure LDH. So just a tip, um, it's, uh, we're gonna do a few different centrifugation steps in this lab. So please um, try to prepare your samples, especially for the first centrifugation um, as, 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 as quickly as you can. Of course, be careful, be safe, um, but the, the faster we can get the first centrifugation step in with as many students' tubes as possible, the, the faster we can get the next set of students' tubes in as possible. Um, so that being said, after we've completed centrifuging our sample and decanting out our supernatant, we are then going to go on to our first purification, or really our second purification step, which is, which is salting out. So salting out is a procedure that's used in the lab to separate proteins by how soluble they are. So we add a salt called ammonium sulfate to our supernatant, and um, that, will, that will cause some proteins to precipitate out of solution, and some proteins will remain in solution. So in our first step, we add a low concentration of ammonium sulfate. This is going to cause some proteins to precipitate, and these proteins are less soluble than LDH, which will remain somewhere in the supernatant. In our next step, um, we're going to add, or sorry, before before I talk about the next step. Um, so from this step, we're going to save our supernatant, which contains our LDH. Um, and then once we have our supernatant in a new tube, we are then going to add even more ammonium sulfate to get to a higher concentration. And this higher concentration of ammonium sulfate will precipitate out our LDH and other proteins that have similar solubility properties. And the supernatant will contain proteins that are more soluble than LDH. So using this two steps with salting out can help us separate out proteins that are less soluble from our target protein from proteins that are more soluble. And then once we've completed the step, we're gonna then take the pellet this time, which contains our LDH, and we're gonna resuspend it and buffer it, and we're gonna use dialysis to help purify out some of that ammonium sulfate from our target protein, because at the end of the day, or at the end of these five weeks, we're trying to get just pure LDH without a lot of other stuff in it. So um, it's just some important things to consider when you're doing the salting out step. Um, we're gonna use we're going to figure out how much ammonium sulfate to add using the volume of our supernatant. So for the first step, we're going to add 0.242 grams per mil of supernatant to um, for this particular for the first step, and then for our second step, we're going to take that supernatant, put it in a new tube, and we're going to add 0.166 grams per mil of supernatant. And make sure to measure the volume of your supernatant for both of these steps. Um, and just general things to consider when you're adding ammonium sulfate, make sure you add it slowly and stir it over ice. And make sure to always label and balance any tubes that you have, um, especially because we're going to, obviously, to get our precipitate out, to pellet out, we have to centrifuge. So please, always, always, when you're centrifuging, label and balance your tubes. So after your first salting out, you're going to measure and record that supernatant volume, like I mentioned, and then you're going to set aside one mil of it in a glass vial. And this is another um, uh, sample that we're going to analyze to, for, for purity, just like our first sample that we set aside. So that way we can look at our purity of our LDH protein during the various steps during this purification process. After the second salting out, this time, like I mentioned, we're going to discard the supernatant we're gonna keep this pellet that we get after centrifuging. And we're gonna, um, once we've discarded the supernatant, we can dissolve the pellet in five mils of buffer. Um, and that will help prepare us to do dialysis. Um, and like I mentioned, during this dialysis step, um, everything has been redissolved, but we wanna remove some of those extra salts, like all of that ammonium sulfate. And we do that essentially by diffusion. 
So at the start of dialysis, on the inside of your dialysis membrane, you have your LDH and the other proteins that have similar solubility properties. These are represented by the, the large purple dots here. There are also a lot of salts in there, um, such as ammonium sulfate, that we want to try to remove during the step. So over time during dialysis, the, the salts can move out of the concentrated solution through the pores in the semi-permeable membrane. So salt and water so can move freely out from our concentrated solution. Uh, excuse me, sorry. So our concentrated solution contains LDH, other proteins, salts, and water. So our salt and our water can freely move across this membrane, so they're going to start diffusing out into our buffer that's in the beaker. And our LDH is going to stay stuffed inside uh, because it's too big to pass through the pores of the dialysis membrane. And most of the other proteins will probably also stay stuck inside the dialysis membrane, but some very, very small proteins might be small enough to fit through those pores. So once the dialysis has reached equilibrium, you can see the, the small red dots that represent the salts in our concentrated solution have diffused out to populate equally in the surrounding buffer. Um, but our, our proteins have remained stuck inside the dialysis membrane. So generally, when you're doing uh, dialysis, you do more than one step. So you'll take your, after a few hours, you'll take out your dialysis membrane and you'll put it into a beaker containing a uh, fresh buffer that doesn't, um, and that will help to encourage more salts to then continue to diffuse out of your membrane to leave your proteins inside uh, more pure. So the more buffer changes and the more time you leave it, um, the more um, the more removal of those undesired salts that you will get. Um, so in the case of this lab, um, I'm just going to ask you all to leave the um, a labeled vial on your bench next to your store plate that has your dialysis, and um, I and Amory will change the buffer for you uh, once, so that's to help you, again, to get a more um, purified, less salty product on the inside of your dialysis membrane. And then we'll transfer that sample to you for a vial. And we'll transfer the sample to a vial, and we'll leave that vial for you to analyze um, in week two. So in summary, after week one, we are going to have separated out our LDH from other proteins that are more or less soluble using that salting out process. Um, we also are going to have removed salt from that LDH sample using dialysis. And we will have also collected two samples for future analysis. So that's our original homogenate straight from the blender, as well as our first salting out um, supernatant. So next week, in week two, you're going to continue purifying the LDH. So we're going to separate it from proteins that have different binding affinities using an affinity column. And we're also going to collect even more samples for analysis. And then we're also going to further work on that salting out one sample so that we can analyze it. And with that, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, you can ask before lab, you can ask during lab. And um, make sure, again, that you have really good notes in your notebook that you can work from. Um, and that's it. I'll see you in lab.